Hawks have had base runners everywhere over the last several innings, but they have never led at any point in this game. Chopper down the third baseline, up the spare, and the Hawks are going to win it. Gregory comes racing home. The celebration begins, and from five down, the Hawks score back and win in extras. The heart attack Hogs do it again, and they take the series. That one is ripped into the right field corner. It's down, it's up off the fence. And Moore's going to race to second base. And if he stops, he's got the cycle. How about that? Robert Moore clears the bases, and he's hit for the cycle in the sixth inning. And even he can't hide the smile. Just another Friday night in the SEC. Here's your game summary. Owen was so good for the Tigers as Auburn built a 4-0 lead. Arkansas had that five-run seventh inning and able to get a run in the eighth without the benefit of a hit. The go-ahead run scoring on a wild pitch. So going to the ninth, it will not be Wiggins Troy trying to finish things off. It was Cops who we saw for three scoreless last night. Yeah, he was almost unhittable last night. Gave up one hit and eight strikeouts. And I'll tell you what, he was just really feeling that cutter. Look at that ERA, 0.9. And one thing that Dave Van Horn said that some guys, they'll if they're going to go to him twice in a weekend, you almost think, okay, a little pitch the first night, get a day off, and then come back again. He said some guys like to pitch back-to-back -back and then rest him on that third day. Just everybody's different how their arm bounces back after throwing. See what the approach is for the Tigers. There is Matt Hobbs, who I think warned us in advance this year about the bounce back year for cops. Keep in mind, he struggled so dearly last year. His ERA was over eight as a team captain. This is sixth year. You were wondering how it was going to play out. Here's Judd Ward. He takes strike one. Well, none of us may have anticipated the numbers that we saw so off the charts good for Cops. It was as if Hobbs, who, of course, you would think would know, who was a bit prophetic. He said, Troy, back in January, early February, before the season had started, that in three months from now, you're going to be writing a special story about Kevin Cox. He knew that pitch right there, that cutter, with that movement was back. It was not there last year. It was hanging in the zone. Now it's doing anything but. It's diving, it's darting, and it's making hitters look foolish. Yeah, it's just absolutely crazy. Ten inches difference from last season to this season. And you see swings like that with guys like Ward that's an excellent hitter. That ball almost hit his back foot, and he swings and misses. That's what we saw last night. Cops came on in the seventh inning. He missed on the first pitch he threw to Nate LaRue. And then he threw nine straight strikes, missing the immaculate inning by one. And look at this wave of a miss. I mean, that's not even close. He missed that ball by eight, eight inches to 12 inches. So Rankin Woolley, the batter, single in a run way back in the third inning. Matt Hobbs has all the analytics. He works with these guys, obviously, more than anybody else. But for him to make that prediction, Troy, that's one you go back and you look at it now and you think, my goodness, he knew exactly what we were going to see this year. I mean, that's just somebody that knows his craft in Matt Hobbs and probably, if not the best pitching coach in the country, he is definitely right up there. When you, when you get interviewed by the New York Yankees out of college, you know what you're talking about. High fly in the air down the right field line. Slavin's pursuing. Wallace over near the railing, willing to go into the seats. And it's out of play. That was a pitch that Cops left a little bit elevated. There's a happy fan. Coming up with a baseball. The Cops just about had that immaculate inning last night. It was only a two-out little dribbler hit off the bat of Bliss that kept him from three hitless and scoreless innings. Ground ball to third. Cullen Smith secures it. Two outs, ninth inning. That's a really nice play by Cullen Smith and a ball that took a pretty wicked hop. That's what you do when you're playing in at third. You just... 
get the glove on it somehow, stay in front of it. So it's up to Tyler Miller, who came into this series, the leading hitter in the SEC. You go back to that cutter a little bit more. He put the work in, invested time to reinvent himself in that pitch. When you're a captain and you have an ERA in excess of eight, you feel like, what am I doing? What's going on? I used to have success and I'm no longer doing it. Well, he has changed that narrative, trying to get the save tonight. He has been the pitcher this year that has been able to pick up the wins to the tune of four. Now he's trying to get save number three and let Arkansas even up this series. Miller does have power, eight home runs. But now the Tigers are down to their final strike or out in the ninth inning. The George Ranch High School product out of Sugar Land, Texas, has taken on a multitude of different roles. And these fans on their feet here at Bon Walker Stadium waiting to erupt on strike three. And Pops has done it. He gets the save in the ninth. And Troy, what a comeback tonight for the Razorbacks. Just an outstanding job by Arkansas and that never give up attitude that they had. They rallied big in that seventh inning and Kevin Cobb slammed the door on the Tigers. The last pitcher the Tigers wanted to see in the ninth inning was Kevin Cobb's and a game that Arkansas rallied to win and look at the excitement for the handshakes and high fives. Can't wait for the series finale tomorrow. So for Troy Eklund and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolden, thanking you for watching. Once again, our final score tonight, a Friday night in the SEC, and the Hawks take down the Tigers 6-5. So long and good night, everyone.